What's up guys, my name is Splattercat and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next LP in our overarching series. So this is going to be Shadowrun Returns. It's a game that I'm incredibly excited about. I've just been vibrating in my seat since I saw this game was coming out in July. Now, I'm an art, I'm a big time Shadowrun player. I love playing Shadowrun Tabletop. I also am a huge, huge, huge fan of the SNES and the Sega Genesis game. More importantly, the latter. I love the Sega Genesis Shadowrun. It was so far ahead of its time, it really got me into the series. And so let's talk for just a second about what Shadowrun is. Shadowrun is basically a fantasy game in the future. It's very cyberpunk, so you've got elves, orcs, trolls, humans, and all those races interacting in a futuristic environment where there's the internet, machine guns, you know, laser-guided missiles, all that fun stuff. Corporations run the entire planet in this lore, so everything is owned by a company. And what a Shadowrunner is, is a mercenary that works for any party, really. You can work for a corporation doing espionage against another corporation, or you can work for private parties attacking gangs, defending bars, really anything and everything. To be honest, a Shadowrunner can be as diverse as what you would see in mercenary groups in real life. Some people do it for esoteric reasons, some people are humanitarian, some people are just downright evil and want to make the most money they possibly can. And so now that we've explained that a tad, let's start a new game and make our first character. Right here you're going to be introduced to why Shadowrun Returns I think is going to be around for quite a long time. It's a concept that was first introduced with Neverwinter Nights as far as I know, and it allowed people to take the tool set and make their own campaigns because the game has no voiceovers or anything like that. It means that, potentially, people could make their own campaigns that are as good as the one that Harebrained Schemes has made in this reboot. We're going to go with the default campaign, and I will tell you guys that I got to beta test a little bit. I've played like five or six hours of the game before they gave me my review copy. But let's go ahead and start that campaign, and it's going to have us create a character here. Character creation in Shadowrun is very similar to something you might have seen in really any other RPG, MMO, and so forth. I'm going to play a, ma a male character this time because we played a female character in our Project Zomboid LP, and then we're going to talk about the races. So stats in this game, there's five, I believe? Six, no six. So body, quickness, strength, charisma, intelligence, and willpower. Body is how much HP and how resilient you are. It's basically how well you take damage, how well toned you are, what kind of shape you're in. Quickness is your ability to act dexterously, your hand-eye coordination, shooting, all that type of stuff, typing, all those random little things. Strength is going to affect your melee abilities and your ability to brute force things. Charisma is going to affect your interactions with other people. Intelligence is going to affect you on the Matrix. Additionally, I think that intelligence is what somebody else uses, but I'll talk to you about it when we get there. Willpower is used by mages and also riggers and it's used to power their spells and it's your ability to withstand, it's your ability to get through. This game calculates damage a little differently. You both have your mental health and you have your physical health and you can you can flatline either. If either goes down to the bottom, you're toast. And so willpower affects that as well. I forgot to mention charisma affects spell casting for shamans once you get a class. Now we have humans and every race has their skills, or their stats anyways, capped at a different level. The body stat, quickness stat, all of those are capped at 9 for humans, and they are very, very average. More so in Shadowrun than you would see in other games. It's going to pop out at you how average humans are when compared to all the metahumans, which is everything that isn't human. The first metahuman race that we're going to look at is the Elf. The Elf is a bit more dexterous, so they have a higher quickness cap, and they have a higher charisma cap because they're very good looking, and that makes all of their social interactions a lot easier. Dwarves are next on the list, and they have a higher body, a higher willpower, and a higher strength cap. And everything else is average. They get a bonus to willpower for free. We have the orcs, which have a plus one to body for free. Their body cap is very high at 14, and their strength cap is pretty good as well at 12. They also take a hit, though, to intelligence and charisma, while quickness and willpower remain standard at 9. Trolls are enormous, and they're one of my favorite races. They're very, very cool. They have a body that is capped out. It's at 17 is the max that they can have in body, and that's simply incredible. If you have a body stat of six or 17, you can get like machine gunned in the face and nothing will happen to you. The reason their body stat is so high is because they have chitinous growth on their skin. They don't mention it in the lore right here. They say vaguely that there's horn-like growth, but their entire bodies are covered with random kind of bony protrusions that are actually hard enough to stop bullets and things of that nature, so that's why their body is so high. Their strength is also pretty pretty amazing. It's at 15. And their charisma takes a hit, their intelligence takes a hit. That's largely due to social stigma and racism. There's a lot of racism or meta-racism in Shadowrun. Humans and elves tend to look down on everybody else, basically. 
but they also have an average willpower, their quickness is a little low, so there's trade-offs for becoming a badass kind of frenzied ber berserker type character. I'm gonna go with a human on this run, I think, just because the average makes the whole thing a lot easier. I prefer kind of the averages that they're gonna give us. Now, we have a number of classes we can pick from, or you can create your own. I'm comfortable with building my own class, so I may go from the ground up, but let's talk about each class. You can play a Street Samurai. A Street Samurai is a general purpose warrior. People in this game, or Shadowrunners, adhere to the Samurai code as best that they can, at least most of them do. And that's what a Street Samurai is. He's a warrior that wanders the street, sort of like a Ronin looking for jobs. They're great with ranged weapons, they're great with melee weapons, they're good with throwing weapons, any type of combat ability they are good with. Mages. Mages are up next when magic reawakened in the world. Some people found that they had the crazy ability to start casting spells. Well, the mages are them and they use willpower to fuel their abilities. Everything from buffs to debuffs to heals to damaging spells, it's all here. Plus, they have some pretty bitchin' wardrobe options. I mean, you look good when you're rolling around as a mage. The next option is my personal favorite, the Decker. Now, Deckers use a cyber deck to jack into the Matrix, and jacking into the Matrix is like turning on your internet and getting online. However, the Matrix, you inject your sentience into it, so you actually go into the Matrix and you exist within it in Shadowrun, and that's the major difference. A high-level Decker is a lot like Neo in the movie The Matrix. They can conjure things, they can destroy entire chunks of the Matrix. They're basically endlessly powerful once you level them up. Riggers are the next option. Riggers are technological whizzes. They're great with surveillance support. They're great with driving vehicles. They control little drones with their mind. They use intelligence to fuel that stat. They have robots that they can command around. They're a pretty cool class. I've never played one in tabletop, but I've watched other people play them, and they're very cool. And the final is one that I'm not actually so familiar with. It's the f it's the physical adept. And if you ever had fantasies of being Ryu or being Ken Masters, or being Goku, that's who the physical adept is for. They use chi, so they do Hadouken type stuff, throwing fireballs, things of that nature. They use body strength and willpower, and it seems like a pretty cool class. I've never seen one before, so, you know, I'm not a big fan of melee combat in worlds where machine guns exist. Doesn't seem to be a good gamble to make. We're going to go with a human decker, and so let's go ahead and pick everything. We're actually going to custom our character. You have to click this little link right here to do that. It took me a while to figure it out. But I might just be daft. I'm going to make him a little paler because, you know, he's been hanging out inside playing Homestuck or doing whatever it is that he does. There we go. He's a little paler. Let's pick him a hairstyle here. Just got a standard comb over. It might work out. Got kind of some backwards wraparound dreads, a mohawk. Another mohawk that's a little bit top heavy. It's got like a turnip thing going on. Kind of some shaggy, haven't had a haircut in a while look. One of those little rat tails that people used to have back in the 90s. The faux hawk that is oh so trendy, although I think it's on the decline now. I think the faux hawk is definitely dying out nowadays. I mean, it's pretty popular there for a little while. And then we've got kind of just like a little chocobo type overlook thing. I don't know. And then we've also got baldness, so I think we went full circle. Oh, no, we didn't. Never mind. We've got a high and tight military. And we've got, I'm going to go with the long hair. That looks badass. I used to have long hair, so I miss it all the time. I cut it off, but I donated it, so it's okay. Let's give him a hair color that's similar to my own. Not that red. My hair is not that red. It's not quite there. I don't want to go with any weird... There we go. That seems about right. And so we can also have a beard. Let's pick our beard here. It's like a Santa Claus beard. Kind of like a Fu Manchu type thing. If they just have sideburns, I would go with those. Kind of a Inigo Montoya looking thing. Can I zoom? Oh, they do have side... Yeah, they have sideburns, dude. I am so happy right now. Well, since they have sideburns, I'm going to go back to short hair. Hold on. I'm going to make them look just like me. There we go. So that works out right there. That looks a lot like me. Let's pick a portrait really quickly. I like that portrait. That dude looks like a psychopath. I'm going to be very disappointed if there's no portrait that looks like my guy. It'll be saddening. Well then, I guess I'll go with the super awesome shades then, since that's really all I have to go with. He's got the little pom-pom thing on the back of his head, but I guess it'll work. Now, going with the Decker, you can create your own class. I said I was going to do that, but I think I'll go with the Decker, just to make the whole thing more streamlined. I'd prefer to get to actually play the game in the first episode. So we're going to continue to our stat distribution and talk about some things. Karma. 
Karma is the XP of Shadowrun. It doesn't suffer from bloat like XP does in a lot of other games. Like, you'll never see yourself getting 32,000 Karma because Karma is a very streamlined system. In fact, it's one of my favorite level up systems. However, Karma is hard to come by in Shadowrun. It's pretty rare that you get Karma. Usually, you only get it for finishing like an entire campaign or job. So, we can apply them a number of ways. We've got eight Karma up here at the top. And the way Karma works is that if you look at these pips right here under body, for example, if I wanted to go from level 3 to level 4 body, it would cost me 4 Karma. And that's how the whole system works. It never gets more complicated than that. You want the next level of an ability? Bammo. You go ahead and you slot into it and you take it. Why does my character have... Ugh, I don't really like their stat allocation. I'm strongly considering... Well, he's got one there. A little bit of intelligence. I don't really like... It's tempting. It's very tempting to go and recustomize everything because, frankly, the way they have it done is a. L They've done their best. I can tell they're trying to give you a well rounded character, but still. I suppose I'll stick with it, though. So I'm going to put a point into quickness. Actually, let's. Quickness is fine. Let's go ahead and beef out ranged combat because I don't think we're going to be up close and personal with anybody. I'm going to go up to level 2 with ranged combat. And what ranged combat does is it is used to calculate our chance to hit with ranged weapons. So that's a very important thing if you ever want to hit people. If you want to sit there and just spray walls with bullets and just be like, ah, take that, you say? And just, you know, perforate concrete the entire game, then don't take it. But if you actually want to hit fleshy objects, go for it. I believe we have a couple choices here. We can go with pistol, we can go with SMG, we can go with shotgun, or we can go with rifle. I believe SMGs are pretty good. Pistols are like snipers. Pistols are a little weird in this game. You can hit from super deep with them, and they do a bit of damage, but you're relying on crits a lot when you go with pistols, from what I understand. SMGs have burst fire. They run out of ammo pretty quickly, from my experience. Shotguns, spray and pray type deal. Dealing damage that way is not my... I've never been a fan of shotguns in games. I'm going to be super honest. Shotguns don't do anything for me. I, eh, you know. Rifles also tempting. Rifles are pretty cool, so I think I'm gonna go with rifles this time. When I was playing in the beta, I went with pistols, and I've seen enough SMGs to know that I like SMGs too, but I've never done rifles. I've always been envious of other people with rifles. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go with rifle one, rifle two. We have dodge, which is our final quickness based skill, but I don't think I'm gonna take it. I don't, I'm not gonna let anybody, it's your chance to get hit by physical attacks. I'm not gonna, we got a machine gun, man. I'm not gonna let anybody get close. I'm gonna go daka 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 and just take them out if they try and get near me. We have a decent strength for now. They gave us a free point in close combat. Might be useful if we ever run out of ammo or anything like that, although I don't think that's really an option in the game. Throwing weapons, pretty good. It's one of those things that people tend to forget about. Throwing a grenade can save your life in a lot of situations. Let's look at our decking skills though because honestly that's our main, that's our MO so we want to make sure that we have some decent decking abilities here. Bringing drones might be kind of interesting. I don't see a individual rigging stat. Spirit control conjuring, yeah. I mean, we could put some points into magic here, but then that's going to mean that we can't cyberware ourselves out. That's right, you can replace your body parts in this game, which is pretty badass with robotic parts. You can get robotic eyes, things like that, but there's a trade-off. If you replace parts of your body, you can no longer use magic. Yeah, that's right, you have your human essence. As you replace your humanity with robotic parts, you can no longer call on the spirits of nature or anything like that. Basically, nature and magic abandon you if you become a totally teched-out crazy guy. I think I'll put an extra point into Mark Target, just in case. I don't think we're going to do any decking early on in the game, but it never hurts to get a front-end start on increasing our abilities, so let's go ahead and we'll confirm there. And we get to choose an etiquette. An etiquette is a slang, or it's a situation that you know how to conduct yourself in. So think about it when you went to high school, you may or may not have known how to conduct yourself. As you go to different places, academia, or you go into a gang, or you go into different cultures, you've got to know how to interact with people in that culture. And that's going to open up dialogue options for you. So we have corporate, which means we are well-versed in the corporate life. We've got security, which means we're well-versed in the way that the police work, I believe. It's for police and patrols. We've got gang etiquette, which means when we deal with gangs, obviously we're going to be able to throw signs and be all kinds of street savvy socialite that means we know how to manage our way through a club and we can impress people shadow runner means we know how to talk to our colleagues street savvy just means that it's kind of a general i believe if i remember if i remember correctly in the tabletop this is the general one that you pick 
if, if you don't know what else to pick. And then academic obviously means that you know your way around a university. I think I'm going to go... Since we're supposed to be a Shadowrunner, I, I'm tempted to go with the Shadowrunner etiquette. But I'm going to get outside my comfort zone and let's go with corporate etiquette. Yeah, let's go with corporate etiquette. And so we get to name our character. Now, everybody's got a real name, but every character or every Shadowrunner has their own street call sign. Mine's going to be Splattercat, obviously, and that works out a mighty fine for the lore in which we're going to be engaging. I'm going to read all of these little role-playing parts because I am a role-player at heart. I love tabletop games, so you'll forgive me, but I am going to read all the intros. I'm going to read all the dialogue, and I'm going to do my best to make the whole thing interesting. So, down and out. Your apartment, 3, in the, uh, three o'clock in the morning. It's got four walls, a roof, and it isn't on fire. Even the cockroaches have fled in search of better accommodations. Not exactly a runner's dream pad, but right now it's about all you have left. Running the shadows is all about feast or famine. One day you're a Nova Hot, working jobs that allow you to eat at five-star restaurants. The next, well, you're here. This one's a famine for the ages. Slagging fixer hasn't called. The money's run out and then some. Sinless and free. Free to starve in the cracks of society run by megacorps who just want your new yen. Something needs to change, and soon. A sin is a serial ID number. You're less than human if you don't have one, just so you know. It's like a barcode that tells the government who you are. If you don't have a serial ID number, you don't exist. That's bad for a general like citizen, but for a Shadowrunner, it's great. So let's do this thing. Here's our house. So we can left-click to move around. You can see that I've got my super awesome cyber, or my cyber deck on my back right there. It's all blue right now because I haven't powered it up or anything. Our swamp heater appears to not be working so well. It's throwing sparks. Definitely a fire hazard. Not the nicest place to live. Now there's some things we can do here. Let's take a look around our apartment. A slip of paper with your bank balance. Enough to cover you through the end of the week. Alright, so we're not on that hard at times. Your notebook, calendar, contacts, that sort of thing. Let's look at our list of contacts. The list is sad and dried up. Carter Detroit, Fixer, no response to messages. Dowd, Shadowrunner dead. Felton Nash, Fixer, missing since February. New Larry, Shadowrunner dead. Sam Watts, Shadowrunner, probably in a gutter somewhere. Sangoma, Shadowrunner dead. Half Jack Dealer, retired or dead. Just so you know what a fixer is, a fixer is somebody that gets you whatever you need. If you have a problem, they fix it. So they can get you guns, they can get you jobs in certain situations, although guys that give you jobs are called Mr. Johnsons. But fixers in general, they tend to fix your problems for you for a price. The list goes on, all either dead, dead ends or dead in general. Our personal calendar is empty. There's nothing to do with no prospects, so things aren't looking so great for us in terms of mercenary work. The vid phone rings, jarring you. Who is calling at 3 a.m.? Let's find out. Sam Watts. The screen leaps to life, making you squint against its brightness. The face on the screen is laughing. Sam Watts. Hey, buddy. I hope I didn't catch you at a bad time. He giggles. He's drunk again or worse. You're zoned. That means he's high. Another giggle. Oh, don't bother me with your side of the conversation. I'm not really here. Just one reason for this vid. Somebody finally geeked me. I'm dead. I probably had it coming. When you're an unsavory character like myself, you tend to associate with other unsavory characters who often partake in unsavory business. Like you, for example. So why am I dead? Well, who knows? It's probably my fault. I wonder where you are right now. I bet you you hit a big payday and you're living high on the hog somewhere. Some of us are born winners and some of us are me. Hey, you remember that Renraku run when things went to hell and we lost Dowd? Or that makeshift saloon on the docks afterwards? I really had your back that night, didn't I? Dowd, that's a name you haven't heard in quite some time. Flashback. And I believe this is going to be our first combat tutorial. I'll try and explain how things work. It says, three years ago, a makeshift bar on the Seattle docks. The night Dowd went down. So let's talk to New Larry. You've been running with New Larry for about six months now. He's a combat mage with a bad tattoo and a bad attitude. He knew Dowd almost as well as you did. Doubt. Never saw anybody die like that before. Idiot. He shakes his head. I hate this fragging city, Splattercat. It's wet and the rain feels like acid and I want out of here. Uh, we can tell him to shut the hell up. We can tell him we wait for money or we can tell him to take a chill pill. I'm going to tell him we're waiting for the money because I'm going to try and role play this one as a money hungry yet loyal type guy. Yeah, for sure. Of course. I'll wait all night if I have to. Sam says, I don't know, Splattercat. Sam's a good guy and can hold his own in a fight, but he's been hitting the bottle pretty good lately. Never on a run so far, but he needs watching. 
He shakes his head. That run went sideways nine ways a Sunday. Now the fixer's late. We can ask him if it smells funny. We can tell him the bastard better show because we're broke. Or we can ask what we should do. I'm not saying it smells funny. Hell yeah, it smells funny. Look at where he set the meeting. This is supposed to be a public place. Cut the dreck, Sam. We both know why Dowd went down and it wasn't the fixer or some other paranoid chip dream of yours. Sam smiles a toothy smile. I've been waiting for this all night. New Larry has something he wants to say, don't you, Larry? Go ahead. Spill it. You were sloppy. He so <laughs> Sam laughs. Sloppy? You think I was sloppy? You've been twitchy all day, son. Look at your hands. They're shaking. And we can tell him to own up to his mistakes. We can ask him if he's been drinking, or we can ask him if he missed a beat. Is that true, Sam? No, I didn't miss a beat. I was on my game the whole time. Remember, I was on point. New Larry was supposed to cover Dowd. Something dawns on him. He leans into New Larry, amused and dangerous. We were set up, and he knows it, don't you, Larry? What was that call you made before we hit Renraku? How come you couldn't geek that guy before he unloaded on Dowd? I've seen you fling a lightning bolt, son. He should have been burnt toast before his gun cleared the holster. New Larry checks his watch and licks his lips, looks over your shoulder at the darkness. He's looking for someone, and it's not the fixer. Okay, I can see where this is going. You chummers are damaged. I'm out. And so, let's say he can, we can ask him if he kept us here long enough. We can tell him to put his hands up, or we can ask how much they paid him to sell us out. I'm going to ask how much they paid. He stops, and a smile slowly appears on his face. Honestly, it didn't take that much. Just enough to get me back to Portland and set up with some Cush Corp job. I'm out of this racket. We've got incoming, says Sangoma, who's right here. Oh, New Larry. Damn it, I skipped one on accident. Well, New Larry basically goes, Hey, hey, gotcha, because I've played this before. We should choose our friends more carefully, Splattercat. Well, at least we had each other. You'll miss me when I'm gone, man. And so here's our first combat. So we've got two guys coming up from the southwest. And we're in turn-based combat. We don't need help. I know how to do this thing. So, first and foremost, we've got Sam Watts. Now, the game, I think, made a slight mistake. They used the same cover system from XCOM. I wish they had stuck with an action point model. That's just me personally. But the two moves, or the one move and a shot, it works fine. It's tried and true, so we can move here. We can sprint out to this range. And you want to pay attention to cover. So we've got half cover right here. I'm going to throw him down behind this picnic table. And he's got an SMG, which is right here. If we want to reload it, we can click this square. Here we can click on this for the different attacks. We've got spray and pray, which does two attacks with a lower chance to crit. And it may hit adjacent characters, but it uses up eight bullets. So... This right here, this little meter, works exactly the same as XCOM. It's going to let you know how much ammo you have left. We've got a 75% chance to hit there, an 81% chance to hit there. We've got a gent right here. Let's take out New Larry. He deserves it. So six damage and six damage, and that's all we get. I'm actually going to swap my weapon here, if I can recall how. I think we There we go. We click that up thing right here. And so it looks like we've got a pistol. Let's go ahead and we're going to sally up to some cover here, and then we'll take a... Well, we've only got the single shot, so we'll take a single shot at New Larry, and we did six damage. Now, Sangoma's going to be our ringer on this one. We want her to be down in cover, and then she was standing up right there. She wasn't in cover. You want to make sure that they're crouched down like this. Now, if you step on that right there, it causes you to slip, so you want to watch out for that spot. And then, does she have aim shot? She does, but she has a 99% chance to hit, so we'll take a shot at him. And so down goes New Larry. His treachery is betrayed. Snitches get stitches, get clogged up in ditches. And so it looks like our friend Sam has taken a little bit of damage. I don't know if the attack rolls work the same in this game as they do in the Tabletop Shadowrun. In Tabletop Shadowrun, the more damage you take, the worse you get at combat. So I'm a little interested in whether that's the way it works. We'll pay attention. It does look like... Oh, never mind. I'm not even injured, so I don't know take a shot at Renraku security. Renraku is a giant mega corporation. Think of them as like the Walmart. Well, no. Think of them as the BP, the British Petroleum of the future. Like, they make people disappear. They do all kinds of terrible, horrible things. They're just not nice guys. I'm gonna go back to burst fire. And so we did six damage, but we missed with the first shot. Singoma, let's take an aim shot with Singoma. So, we can take an aim shot. It's gonna increase our accuracy by 15%. And so 20 damage, we got a crit, so double. And the first corporate security guy is down. And then we can also take a shot at him. Now we can only use, if you look at here, I'll explain what this means. We can only use this every three turns. It's got a three turn cooldown. It uses one ammo. Its range is 19 squares and does 10 damage. 
So you can pause it and take a look after my explanation if you want to get more acquainted with it. But she's got a 92% chance to hit that guy. So we are going to take the second shot. 10 damage is a pretty substantial hit. It's going to work out mighty fine. Oh, and we're getting flanked from the other side. Okay, so we're going to need to shift and displace. Let's see what we can do here. We can switch between characters. The game is fully turn-based, so you get your entire turn with everybody before they get another turn, which is good because I need Sangoma to see if she can take this guy out. And so down he goes. And what we're going to do with Sangoma now is swap her to the other side of the boxes and get ready for the assault that's coming from the other side. Splattercat, let's line him up. Well, the buffet doesn't give full cover, otherwise I'd line him up there. I guess we'll just take a quick step over to here. And we'll take a Hail Mary shot. And we got him. It's a weak shot, though. It only does half damage. Or a weak hit, anyways. We can look at our inventory over here on the right. We do have frag grenades, and since this is just a tutorial, I'm probably going to end up using those. So let's see if we can get a grenade. Oh, it takes two action points. If you look at the bottom right of any action, that's how many action points it takes. And you get two total for your turn, so I suppose I'll have him just take a, another Hail Mary shot. So two hits there, both weak for half damage, so they did cumulatively they did the same amount as one shot. We just got shot in our face. Our sexy sideburned face. And let's return fire here. So he's out of cover, so we want him first. I'm going to take two shots at him, and he is down. We got a crit for 12 damage. He looks like he's thrown a nade, but he overthrew it, so that's good. Basically, he critically failed. Oh, and we're getting flanked from that direction, too. Yikes, this run has just gone all kinds of seven ways to shit Sunday. All right, well, let's take a shot. Oh, that's not what I wanted. It clicked behind him. Lovely. Well, that's not so bad. At least he's out of the range of this other guy. We'll take a shot at this first corporate... Oh, we missed with 95%. Statistically, we just got completely and totally ganked. At least we don't have to worry about him taking a shot, so that was unfortunate. Sometimes, I'm not sure what they use to program the game, but clicking on things, once again, can be a little sketchy. Oh, no. So he just summoned a demon on us. I think the demon gets to act on its first turn, too, which can cause us all kinds of problems. I'm going to have to take a look at my health after this one. We're not too beat up, but we really, really, really want to shoot at that guy. If we kill him, his summon will die. And so let's shift ourselves out of line of sight for them. I want them to chase me a little bit. So we're going to shift over to here, take a shot at Renraku's security, and hopefully he can finish the job over here. Oh, and he's out of ammo. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It takes one action point to reload your gun. Obviously, there's a little bit of an adjustment period here for me. Let's move Sengoma over as well and see if we can flatten that security guard. So he's down too. He's going to take a long shot at us with a fireball. It does 12 damage. That actually hurt a lot. Okay, a weak hit right there. Magic in this game is very powerful, but it tends to have the payback that you can't use it like turn by turn, back to back. You tend to get yourself in trouble that way. So let's snag some cover. Never hurts. And what do I have on hand? I've got a Rezzer, I've got a Med Kit, and I've got a Finchetti Frag Grenade. Well, I loathe to focus on attacking the Inferno for now. But we may not really have any other pertinent options, so... Let's shift Sam over to here. Was that a double move? Really? Okay. Acceptable. Not going to whine and cry about it. Singoma's pretty beat up. Let's go ahead and use her aimed attack. See what kind of damage we can put on the Inferno. Not enough. I was hoping to drop the Inferno on that turn, but unfortunately, not going to work that way for us. The first fireball missed, but I'm willing to bet the next two won't. We'll see what happens. Oh, they missed again. Okay. Whatever you say there, champ. So we have the ability to fire on him twice. I'm going to take the 250% versus like the 170 that I would get if I moved up. I'm going to focus my fire on the Shaman. There we go. So because the Shaman died, his summon now died. Let's get Sengoma back into full cover so that she's not flanked. We'll take a shot there. And that's all we're going to get done for this turn. Hopefully that misses. It does not miss. And so Sengoma took a little bit more damage. I'm not going to use this kit right here, I believe, is persistent, so I'm not going to use any of it. I'll take a couple more shots at that mage. We missed twice. Have Sam do a little bit of the old spray and pray. But unfortunately, no such luck. With Sengoma, uh, she's got one turn until we can use... There we go. 
and Sangoma lowers her guns and eyes Sam. You okay, Sam? Sam is breathing heavy and looks shaken. That was a hell of a thing. We can tell him it's part of the life. We can say he did good. Yeah, you did good. You were born for this gig, Splattercat. Me? Not so much. I think I'm gonna hang it up. Find a nice brothel somewhere. Stay drunk till I croak. What about you? Well... Guess we'll continue doing this. It's the only life we know. Well, you're a dumbass, and I'll drink to you when you're dead. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm not gonna outlast you. I guess you can drink to me. And so back we go. You stare at Sam's face on your comm link and shake off the memory. Time to focus. I had your back that night, didn't I? Well, I'm asking you myself, who would care if I die? Who would give a rat's ass? Better or worse, your name is at the top of the list. Maybe it's the only name on the list. So, I set up a dead man switch to send you this call. I got a 100,000 new yen insurance policy, payable when you find the one who creased me. Along with a conviction, alive with a conviction, or in a body bag with justification, either way works. Contact my law firm, Rogers, Mengert, and McCain when the job is done. They'll know what to do. He turns to his left. Chet? The camera swivels to show a well-dressed man sitting next to Sam. Pursuant to Mr. Watts' wishes, Rogers, Mengert, and McCain has installed a secure dedicated phone line so you may contact us directly when the task is complete. We will then begin a verification process. Note, you must also be on a secure landline to access this number. We will not accept transmissions from comlinks or other devices. The camera swiggles, or swivels back to Sam. He straightens up, talks seriously for the first time. Look, Splattercat, I've led a Drek life. I've probably left a Drek corpse. I've hurt people. Hurt myself. I don't know. Maybe I just want the last word. Maybe I want someone to give a crap that I sucked air for a while. What do you say? Yeah, I'll get to the bottom. I'm a loyal person, so I'll get to the bottom of this. You cover me with a gun, I'll cover you with a gun. I hope you just said yes. I've got a locator chip slotted in my head these days. If and when the heart stops, it'll activate. That's how you'll find me. See you on the slab. Looks like we're heading to Seattle. And so that's that. I think that's where I'm going to cut off this episode. Let me go ahead and, yeah, this is where we're going to break it off. So my name is Splattercat. Thanks for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the first episode of our Shadowrun Returns LP. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm having a blast, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this game. I've got a lot to add to the lore. I've read a ton of the books. I'm really into it. So I'll see you guys next time with part two, and take care out there, everybody.